The Air TV News broadcast crew and I, Delete Sahaya, are now ready for your daily news briefing at 10.30 local time. But first, let us catch up with the major headlines. <music> President of Federal Republic of Somalia arrives in Asmara. <music> Coverage of vaccination programs in Asmara region. Japan earthquake death toll rise to 161. India ISRO Aditya L1 solar mission reaches destination. On our local news, the President of the Federal Republic of Somalia, His Excellency Hassan Sheikh Mahmoud, arrived in Asmara in early afternoon hours today for a two day working visit. Upon the arrival at Asmar International Airport, President Hassan Sheikh Mahmoud and his delegation was accorded warm welcome by President Issa Safourke. During his first meeting held in the afternoon hours at the State House, President Issa Safourke and President Hassan Sheikh Mahmoud discussed on enhancing bilateral ties between the two countries. The meeting was also attended by Mr. Osman Saleh, the Minister of Foreign Affairs, and the Ambassador of the Federal Republic of Somalia in Eritrea. Dr. Henok Tsahaye, the Medical Director of the Ministry of Health branch in the Ansaba region, reported that, thanks to the coordinated effort, vaccination coverage has reached an impressive 95% throughout the region. Mr. Henok commended the active participation of the public and health sector, particularly in areas such as the maternal and child treatment, the control of communicable diseases, latrine usage, and other health-related initiatives. He pointed out that the public's involvement in establishment maternity waiting rooms is at a treatment their dedication highlighting the importance of the reducing maternal and child mortality rate as a cornerstone of the country's health care service, Dr. Henok create, credited rather, public strong participation and contribution for significance increasing the number of maternity waiting rooms and the rising trends of the pregnant women delivering at health care facilities. Additionally, Dr. Henok emphasized the ongoing effort to expand treatment options and reduce the prevalence of non-communicable diseases. The Ansawa region currently boosts three community hospitals, five health centers, 28 health stations, and an HIV AIDS counseling center, all working towards improving the region's healthcare landscape. The eagerly awaited sports and educational week has commenced with great enthusiasm in Forest Subzone. A total of 25 24 schools from subzones are set to participate in this existing event. Mr. Mohammed Saleh Omar, the head of the Culture and Sport at the Ministry of Education branch in the subzone, announced that the week-long festivities will feature a variety of competitions including general knowledge, football, volleyball, and athletics. Highlighting the importance of this week in promoting unity and competitiveness among students, Mr. Mohammed Saleh called up on parents to attend and support their children during this event. Mr. Mohammed Abdullah, the head of the educational office in the subzone, expressed his confidence in the schools throughout participation and anticipated a high level of competitiveness among the participants. Parents' committee emphasized that the competitions scheduled for a week would play a significant role in helping students discover their talent and urge for its continued implementation. Dear viewers, we'll be back with the international news shortly. Stay tuned. Welcome back. The death toll from Japan's devastating New Year's Day earthquake has risen from 120 to more than 160, authorities said. Efforts are continuing to find more than 100 people who remain missing a week later. 
but bad weather is hampering rescuers with heavy rain and snow triggering warnings of landslides and building collapsing. The 7.6 magnitude earthquake struck the remote Noto Peninsula, topping buildings and sparking a major fire. The majority of the death have happened in hard-hit cities of Wajima and Suzu. Meanwhile, the number of people missing has dropped from 195 to just over 100. The death toll has jumped from the 120 reported on Sunday. More than 2,000 people are reportedly still cut off due to the massive damage to roads. Several others are living in emergency shelter, shelters. Rather, Japanese military has been handling out supplies including food, water, blankets for those who have had to vacate their homes. On our last news. The Indian Space Research Organization inaugural solar mission Adita L1 has reached its destination within the anticipated four-month time frame, Prime Minister Narendra Modi said on Sunday. Launched on September 2nd, the spacecraft positioned itself at Long Range Point 1 from where it was undertake a comprehensive study of the sun, focusing on the solar corona and influence on space weather. The satellite covered approximately 1.5 million kilometers over the span of four months, just a fraction of Earth's sun distance of 150 million kilometers. The long range point where satellites is stationed benefits from gravitational forces that allow objects to remain relatively stationary, reducing fuel consumption for the spacecraft. Equipped with seven play roads, Aditya L1 is selected to conduct remote sensing of the Sun in, in situ observation from estimated five years. Named after the Hindu word of the Sun, this mission follows Indian's research achievement of being the first country to successfully land on Moon's South Pole, surpassing Russia's failed Luna 25 with the Chandrayaan 3 mission. Chandrayaan 3 landed on the unexplored South Pole of the Moon in August last year. Dear viewers, we've come to the end of Nice News. Let's have a quick recap of the headlines. President of Federal Republic of Somalia arrives in Asmara. Coverage of vaccination program in Asawa region. Japan earthquake death toll raises to 161. India ISRO Aditya L1 solar mission reaches destination. That is all our local and international news viewers. Thanks for watching and have a good night.